yesterday we covered chapter 17 of bhagavad gita which talks about divisions of faith we saw how krishna tells about the faith in mode of goodness faith in mode of passion and faith in mode of ignorance <clears throat> and accordingly there was distinction between austerities in three modes charities in three modes worship in three modes food habits in three modes and then finally krishna gives the solution that in material world there will always be influence of these three modes but if we have to overcome the influence of these three modes then we should learn to connect everything to krishna and he tells three words om tat sat which also denotes om is sambandha tat means doing everything for the supreme lord abhideya and sat means our ultimate destination the spiritual world so krishna told that if we connect our activities results of our activities sacrifices austerities charities with this om tat sat concept then we will be liberated from the material world now those who get liberated or those who desire for that liberation are called renunciates hmm. renunciates those who desire for liberation from material world are called renunciates momokshu in sanskrit we say momokshu momokshu means those who desire liberation so the next chapter the 18th chapter starts with arjuna's question he asks krishna who is that renunciate what is the real meaning of being renunciate what is the meaning of being free from all contamination of results of action now this question may be familiar to you because arjun also asked that in the karma kanda section in the karma yoga section of bhagavad gita where arjun asks krishna who is real sanyasi who is real renunciate do we have to give up work or do work in action or action then krishna explains the concept of karma yoga so we have to understand that this 18th chapter of bhagavad gita is now the conclusion of bhagavad gita so many of the topics which you already studied will be revised in this chapter so krishna is coming to conclusion of the whole discussion and therefore the question of arjuna the first question may be sounding as a repeated question but that is with a purpose of final revision so let's start with 18.1 arjuna uvacha sanyasasya mahabaho tattvam ichhami veditum tyagasya charishi kesha prithak keshi nishudana so there are two things one is sanyas what is sanyas and second is what is tyag tyaga means renunciation so what is renunciation and what is sanyas the renounced order of life that is the starting of this chapter keshava priya mata ji can you read the translation arjuna said oh mighty armed one i wish to understand the purpose of renunciation tyaga and of the renounced order of life sanyasa O killer of the Keshi demon, master of the senses. So, Krishna has been addressed here with three names. It's very important. You can note it down. First is Rishi Kesha. Rishi Kesha means master of senses. Rishik means senses. Rishi Kesha means master of the senses. 
So because Krishna, you are the master of all senses and my mind is in doubt, you are also master of my mind. So you can eradicate that doubt. You can give pleasure to my senses by eradicating my doubt. <laughs> Rishikesh. Second name here given is Keshi Nishudana, the last word of the verse. Keshi was the demon who was sent by Kansa. He was the last demon to be sent to Vrindavan. And then after that, Krishna came with Akruda and killed Kansa. So this Keshi denotes doubts. Doubts are like demons. And Arjuna expects Krishna to kill the demon of doubt, Keshi, Keshi Nishudana. The Krishna, you killed Keshi, that's good. But now you have to kill doubts in my heart. And then third is Mahabaho. Krishna may say that, why don't you kill yourself? So Arjuna is saying, no, you are Mahabaho. Mahabaho means you are powerful. Actually, Baho means arms. And Mahabaho means you have great strength in your arms, mighty armed. So I don't have that strength to kill my own doubts. But you have all that strength. So please, you kill my doubts. That is the request of Arjuna. So two questions Arjuna is asking here. First, what is Tyag? Tyag means renunciation. And second is what is Sanyas? What is renounced order of life? So let's read Krishna's answer. Rasamrit Prabhu, can you read the second verse? Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, Dhanatanam, Vishwa Prabhupada. The Supreme Personality of God has said the giving up of activities that are based on material desire is what great learned man can the renounce order of life, sannyasa, and giving up the results of all activities in what the wise call renunciation, tyaga. So in one verse, Krishna clarifies what is sannyas and what is tyag. What is sannyas? Giving up the very root activities which are not in terms with Vedic scriptures, kamya karmas, that is called sannyas. Like begetting children, having in family life, the giving up the very root of these activities for fulfilling one's personal desires. Like, suppose, when I look at food, I get carried away. Hmm? Everyone gets carried away. So giving up food altogether is sannyas. But what is tyag? Tyag means giving up the results of activities while doing the activities is tyag. I will eat food, but I will not eat as a object of sense gratification. I will take it as prashad. So this is the simple difference. Sannyas means performing only necessary activities to keep body and soul together. That's it. But Tyaga means one will do all activities necessary for his ashram, but then he will not be attached to the uh, to the results of these activities. So Krishna further explains that in next verse. Sachidananda Prabhu, please read. Yes, Prabhuji. Some learned men declare that all kinds of fruitive activities should be given up as faulty. Yet other sages maintain that acts of sacrifice, charity, and penance should never be abandoned. Hmm. So now Krishna, having established the difference between sannyas and tyaga, he tells that what should be given up totally and what should not be given up totally. Hmm. So learned men give up fruitive activities like sense gratification. They give up totally. 
but some activities like doing sacrifices giving charity doing penances although they are also external activities but they should never be given up like suppose one doctor tells you that don't eat anything that doesn't mean don't eat medicine also you have to eat medicine you don't have to eat anything rubbish so here krishna is saying that we can't give up certain activities which are for purification but we can give up things which are the cause of bondage let's read the next verse venudari prabhu text 4 O best of the Bharatas, now hear my judgment about renunciation. O tiger among men, renunciation is declared in the scriptures to be, the, to be of three kinds. So now Krishna is going into the details of renunciation. Let's hear what Krishna wants to tell about renunciation. So, Usha Mataji, next verse. Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Acts of sacrifice, charity and penance are not to be given up. They must be performed. Indeed, sacrifice, charity and penance purify even the great souls. So, these three things Krishna encouraged not to give up. Sacrifice, charity, penance. Because these are actually the purificatory processes for a living entity. When one does sacrifices, one realizes that actual enjoyer is Krishna. By austerities, we purify our, our existence, our body, our mind. And by charity, we purify our occupation. So all are important to the purification of our living in this material world. So Devi Mataji, can you read text 6? All these activities should be performed without attachment or any expectation of result. They should be performed as a matter of duty or son of Rita. That is my final opinion. But one condition Krishna gives if you do these activities with personal motives, then it will fall in the mode of passion. You remember last chapter? Activities done with personal agenda of sense gratification or getting name and fame, then it will fall in the category of mode of passion. But if you really want to get purified, then all these activities, charity, penance and sacrifice should be done without attachment and without any expectation of result. So that is very, very important. Deva Dev Prabhu, next verse. Please unmute. Prescribed duty should never be, be renounced. If one gives up his prescribed duties because of illusion, such renunciation is said to be in the mode of ignorance. Very heavy statement, which Krishna already told before also. You remember Krishna told if somebody gives up his prescribed duties, then he incurs sin. He goes to hell. Krishna already told that in third chapter. So here Krishna is revising that same concept that prescribed duties you don't have to give up. If you give up them, Thinking that this is all unnecessary, then that is renunciation and mode of ignorance. Many times it happens, you know, when we feel challenges in our devotional life also, we feel that, oh, you know, I will not go to temple now. Let me just sit in my home and do bhakti. You know, why I have to engage in all this, you know, politics and this and that. What is that? We have to remind ourselves that is renunciation and mode of ignorance. Because we have to support in Prabhupada's mission. We have to do our prescribed duty as being initiated devotees in ISKCON. So we can't just give up those duties. Otherwise, that will be renunciation in the mode of ignorance. Vansi Vilasani Mataji, please read text 8.
please unmute. Anyone who gives up prescribed duties as troublesome or out of fear of bodily discomfort is said to have renounced in the mode of passion. Such action never leads to the elevations of renunciation. See, some people don't want any trouble in life. You know, one is in the mode of ignorance. They just give up their prescribed duties. Second is, they are very clever. They will only do some duties which will give them sense gratification. But other duties they don't want to do because that will be troublesome. I'll give you an example. There was one boy who came to meet me, you know, a couple of months back. And he was telling that, you know, I don't want to marry. So I said, okay, then you want to become a brahmachari? He said, no, I don't want to become brahmachari also. Then I asked him, what do you want to become? You want to become a brahmastra? You know, see, one is brahmachari, one is grihastra. Something between is Brahma plus Astra, Brahma Astra. You want to become Brahma Astra? He said, no. I said, then why, why you don't want to marry? He said, no, if I'll marry, then my wife will control me. Okay, then why you don't want to become a Brahmachari? If I will be in temple, then temple president will control me. That means what? This person doesn't want any responsibility in life. He wants to be independent. So this kind of people, their renunciation is in the mode of passion. They don't want any bodily discomfort. Their life should have complete sense gratification. So they, their renunciation is guided by this kind of uh, mode of passion. Now, Kripalu Keshavi Mataji, please read text 9. Hare Krishna Prabhu. O Arjuna, when one performs his prescribed duty only, because it ought to be done, and renounces all material association and all attachment to the fruit, his renunciation is said to be in the mood of goodness. Yes. So now, mode of ignorance we have seen, and we, we, are, we have also seen... Screen. Okay. So we have also already seen mode of ignorance, mode of passion, and now Krishna is telling about mode of goodness. So what happens in mode of goodness? In mode of goodness, basically, we have to do our prescribed duties. We can't give them up just thinking that they're troublesome. But we don't have to be attached with its fruits. And the same concept of karma yoga, which has been described in the previous uh, chapters. Okay, uh, Varad Krishna Prabhu, please unmute and read 10th verse. The intelligent renouncer situated in the mode of goodness neither hate neither hateful of inos of sorry uh, neither hateful of inauspicious work nor attached to auspicious work has no doubts about work. So one who is in the mode of goodness, one who is an intelligent renouncer, what he does, he neither hates any work, neither he is attached to any work. He just do his duties as service to Krishna. But then somebody may ask that, but, is, but it is better to completely give up these actions because, you know, some may produce some <clears throat> disturbance, some may produce some uh, some sins in course of doing it. So Krishna is clarifying that in the next verse. Before that, Sora Prabhu. <clears throat> Hare Krishna Sora. Prabhu. So Prabhu, Prabhu ji, you know, Hare Krishna Prabhu, can you hear me? Yeah. Prabhu, uh, in, uh, in this... Uh, so in auspicious work, please take for example, I'm I'm just I'm trying to understand from our, my normal point of view, so is that when we go to work, and uh, you know we don't you know the work is heavy load is heavy, and we try to you know your voice do is, which is not your heavy. voice your voice is not at all clear, Prabhu. Prabhuji, now it is clear. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Prabhuji, what does inauspicious mean? Anything which is not favorable to us, we should also not be hateful of that or we should not uh, we should not uh, drift away from that. Is that is that the understanding? See, I'll give you an example. Like somebody is a brahmachari. Now, as per the scriptures, brahmachari should not deal with money and women. That is an inauspicious work for him. But as he is serving a spiritual master, he has to do some service in the temple where he has to collect funds, where he has to take care of congregation members, listen to their problems. So although as per his ashram, these activities are not auspicious, still he will do it as service to the spiritual master. Now coming to Grihasthas, there may be some situations which are not very conducive for his ashram. Like suppose you are working in railway. You know, just giving an example. You are working in Indian railways. And in Indian railways, there are many meat eaters, sinful people, they are traveling. So in a way, you are serving these non-devotees. But still you do that because that is the situation you are in. And that duty is helping you to maintain your family and Krishna consciousness until it doesn't grossly break the four regulatory principles. That is black and white. But when we are in situations which may not be completely auspicious, like, like I went to North Carolina a couple of days back. Now, in the whole complex, they don't allow to keep Tulsi plant. You know, Now, the devotees living there, they can't keep Tulsi plant. It's an auspicious situation. But they can't leave that place because that is the place they have and they can't afford a house elsewhere. So what they have done? They have adjusted the situation. Okay, it's an you know, inauspicious situation, but I can't run from it. I have to maintain my family. So they bring dried tulsi and they offer with that, you know, bhoga. So this can be some situations which may be inauspicious in terms to spiritual life. And still people have to do it, keeping in mind that, okay, externally, it may not be that auspicious. Best example is Arjun himself. Killing his own guru, killing his own relatives is an inauspicious work. But then still he has to do it because it's his duty being asked by Krishna to do it. Okay? Okay. Yeah. So now we come to the point where Krishna is telling that actually it is impossible for giving up the work. You remember this also Krishna told in third chapter, in fifth chapter also. Krishna says, you can't live without work. So same thing he is revising here. <clears throat> Nishta Mataji, can you read 11th verse? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandrat Pranam. It is indeed impossible for an embedded being to give up all activities. Therefore, it is said that he who renounces the fruits of action is one who has truly renounced. So Krishna is now giving the final definition of renunciation. Best renunciation is when one gives up the results of his actions. Because as we are living in the material world, we have to have needs fulfilled for the body. Like I remember reading Radhanath Maharaj's book, The Journey Home. And when Radhanath Maharaj goes to Himalayas, he sees all these, uh, you know, sadhus and sannyasis. Even His Holiness Bhakti Charu Maharaj also wrote in Ocean of Mercy that, you know, there are so many people he saw in the Himalayas. And they also have their needs. Like he mentions about one couple who was living in the Himalayas. But he needed, they needed, they do austerities in cave, but then they needed certain necessities of life, like, you know, some foodstuffs and other things. So they hired one person, local person, who would supply them things and they would pay to him. So even if you go to a cave, you still have needs. You can't just live without needs. So this world, we can't give up activities, but true renunciation is giving up the results of those activities. Okay. Vishnu Priya Mataji, can you read 12th verse? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. 
who won who won who is not renounce the threefold fruits of action desirable undesirable and mixed accrued after death but those who are in the renounce order of life have no such result to suffer or enjoyed so one who is not renounce in simple words one who is attached to his activities he has to go through three fruits of action what are they anishtham ishtham mishram three things desirable undesirable mixed what is desirable desirable for a attached person is heavenly planets going to swarga so sometimes in material world they go to swarga after death what is undesirable hell narka anishtham so sometimes they go to hell and third is mixed mixed is mixture of happiness and suffering that is human life in bhumandala so they live here sometimes they enjoy sometimes they suffer so like that these kind of three results they get if they are attached to their karma but if they are not attached to their karma then they are not not bound to these results and they go back to krishna now the natural question is okay then who does the work if we have to incur the punishment we are soul but body is working like one time one person has killed another person he murdered and when the the court called him he said i should not be punished because my hands have killed this person not me so this type of logic who is the real cause hands are the cause the person is the cause the demigod of hands indra he is the cause of murder who is the cause of murder so krishna is telling five causes of action in this material world starting from verse 13 Sora Prabhu, can you read text thirteen? Yes. O oh, mighty Amdhasul, according to the Vedanta, there are five causes for the accomplishment of all actions. Now learn of now learn of these from you. So Krishna is describing these five causes of of action. so whatever right or wrong action somebody performs either by body mind or speech is caused by these five factors therefore one should never think that he is only doer no he is maybe desiring but actually there are five more factors which are necessary for one living entity to act in this material world so these five mm-hmm. are in projected on your screen what are these five the place of action the body the performer the various senses many different kinds of endeavor and ultimately super soul these five factors constitute any action now let us understand them one by one first is the body if you remember 13th chapter this body was described there as the field of activity so until unless you don't have a field a place to perform something you can't act so body becomes the first factor for action second now you do need a doer soul soul performs activity now how you perform any activity you need instruments that is senses like suppose you want to you want to draw a rangoli so for you know you understand rangoli yes so if you want to draw a rangoli then you need a place for drawing the rangoli you need colors and then somebody has to draw it so these instruments those colors become the senses we need senses to perform our activities and then cheshta the endeavor you have colors you have place you have person but he is just sitting there he is not drawing 
then it will not happen so the person has to endeavor he has to actually put his energy to have something accomplished and then last but supermost is sanction of the super soul so these five if one of them will be missing there will be no action the body will not be there there will not be action now you will ask that if there is no body how there are senses no body is gross body and subtle body but senses can also be on the level of mind like suppose even one who is blind can't he see he has his own eyes of mind he visualizes things he can't see with physical eyes but still he visualizes things like when we are sitting alone nobody is speaking to us but still we can't hear our own voice is you know sometimes we are talking to ourselves in mind and we are hearing our own voice that is like hearing from mind senses of the mind so the instrument senses are more distinguished aspect of the body but they are also different then karta the soul if soul is not there of course there can't be any action if there is no endeavor there is no action yogis do that yogis are in body yes present there as being soul but they don't do cheshta they just withdraw their activities so yes they don't do any action in that way and devam super soul until super soul will not agree then things will not happen now what motivates this action yes saurabh prabhu prabhu cheshta uh, cheshta means that uh, my it doesn't will not come under mind and senses or it no, would be no. a different no see mind and senses they are tools they are not living but cheshta is energy spiritual energy when souls does activity that activity is called cheshta so endeavor is not material because here the soul is putting his energy into dead matter so that process is called as cheshta okay so now somebody may ask that how it all began how this action is governed like suppose if you are sitting now here in class and somebody brings your favorite food item then the cheshta begins how how it starts how the action how the how it stimulates that is the second part of this chapter let us understand this how the action is stimulated can you read text 18 pratima mata ji can you read that what motivates mm-hmm. the action action of ji knowledge the object of knowledge and the know all the three factors that motivate action the senses the word and the doer or the three constituents of action so three factors that bring about action how this particular activity happens three factors first is gyanam gyanam means knowledge means the process of action knowledge means by which something is known so that is called first factor second is gyanam what is to be known the object of action and third is parigyata knower so these three factors become the process of knowledge object of knowledge and the knower so first soul sees some object that is game and then soul tries to realize that okay this is for my gratification or this is not for my sense gratification this is how it starts so these three combine and they instigate the thinking feeling willing then mind starts to plan that yes yes this object is my object of sense gratification for example it's a crude example but it will make it very clear 
like when a man looks at his mother he doesn't have feeling for sense gratification but same man when he looks towards a beautiful lady then he may have desire for sense gratification so it it is governed by object of knowledge you see soul looks at the object of knowledge then he decides okay this is for my sense gratification or not no no this is not for my sense gratification the process will not start but when the soul thinks this this is for my sense gratification then th thinking feeling willing starts and then this worker with the senses with this thinking feeling with the willing does the actual activity does that make sense i'll again repeat first of all we see the object of senses okay suppose you look at a bowl of halwa that is more sattvic example so if you look at a bowl of halwa and you have diabetes then will anything happen no you can't eat it so nothing will happen but suppose you don't have diabetes and you love sweets and this is like butter pan pineapple halwa with cashews pistachios everything on the topping and you love sweets then what will happen then immediately there will be desire to eat thinking feeling willing then you will pick it up and eat so worker desire that is the object these three make the action happen so now look at the diagram again first of all this part can you see my cursor this part yes, this part identifies okay this object is for me or not then once this stage is cleared then the soul thinking feeling willing that yes how i have to gratify the senses and then with the object of senses it does the actual activity so this is the process which krishna is describing on the 18th verse but then what about the free will of the jiva jiva is dependent on the sanction of the lord because the we have you remember the fifth term is super soul but super soul never interferes in the free will of the living entity he will never interfere because jiva can choose he has to act or not if he can choose that no this is halwa i am having diabetes i don't have to eat then he doesn't need to eat it's all dependent on jiva's desire so super soul will only sanction at the last step but how it starts it with jiva so jiva is not forced to do any activity in material world but super soul gives permission for the action any question so far any question yes varad krishna prabhu so so the place of action is it not the place in which the jiva is placed and jiva is placed where let's say you know i'm a i'm a lion yes you know i'm placing the body of a lion or yes. i am placing the body of a human being right if i'm placed in the body of a lion i can't be asking you this question yes it's only that because i'm placed in the body of a human being i can relate and ask you a question yes so i always thought you know that this place of action is where the soul is how yes. how uh, how wrong i am prabhu this is oh, what krishna correct. is saying this is what krishna is saying here you see what is the first factor adhishtan the place of action the body yeah so it it matches okay. with your understanding that place of action okay. is the body but now what we have discussed last is how one acts in body now within body the discussion is going on the lion is in the body okay. but then lion yeah. sees grass sees rabbit run not run after grass 
lion will run after the rabbit so that is the secondary step within body that is the distinction okay all right okay thank you yeah sara prabhu hare krishna prabhu i have one question in this that uh, so the or the knowledge many times what we see that suppose a person is uh, suppose i'm just saying that the person is uh, is eating non non vegetarian non vegetarian and they are they are you know uh, they have been his family is eating from the birth he doesn't have any knowledge whether vegetarian is good or you know vegetables are good or not vegetarian then the knowledge to distinguish uh, between what is right and wrong will not come to that person uh, so easily or you know uh, for the for so many years he would be eating uh, flesh so then in that case uh, you know how can a person uh, how can a person get get the right knowledge and act around it Shila, so one is Shila, this... Shila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati used to say, nobody is innocent in the material world. Nobody is innocent here. Why he used to say that? Because you see somebody getting birth in a particular family, it is because of his previous choices. And every jiva has this opportunity to accept the knowledge. Because he is getting knowledge through devotees through scriptures now we may ask that oh some people don't have that opportunity because in previous life they misused that opportunity and now they are just reaping the results of this previous lives so first they have to finish this course of their present life and then maybe in future lives they will again get that opportunity again like suppose you imagine a well imagine a well a dry well and in that dry well there is a exit at the bottom of dry well okay only one exit now if you put a blind men inside that well okay how you will search for the exit how you will search how you will search for the exit you touch you will touch each thing and then he he will touch the the boundary of the well right he will touch the walls of the well okay now just as he is close to the door he started to scratch his head okay and he moves and he moves ahead he misses the exit then what will happen he has to again go to that circle Outside. exactly he has to again come through the whole process and then if he is lucky enough if he doesn't scratch his head again near the entrance near the exit then he will get out of the well so what happens is we see only the picture of this life but we have to see the picture of whole you know series of lives for a jeeva so everybody gets this chance like we are getting this chance if we don't take it seriously what will happen next life we may end up in some animal species or within human beings also we may not get krishna consciousness then then what will happen we have to complete the whole course of our actions and reactions and then if we are lucky in future lives we will again get that opportunity so we have to understand that we don't look these situations within one life but we allow us to think that yes there are so many lives associated with this jeeva and accordingly he is getting that opportunity okay prabhu so, so my second question is that uh, i'm sorry i'm asking this question but uh, suppose uh, we are eating uh, we are eating sweets now are some you know when we see sweets we want to eat it and the effect is so strong in the mind that even if we try to control us the mind will not let us be in control he mind will always want that sweet right and out of 100 times 90 90 91 percent times we will eat that sweet right so i'm just saying that if mind is so controlling for a person to if he is in ignorance to go to goodness is like how a person and he is not getting any any scripture support or any any support from uh, you know is not 
how can he come out of that because otherwise that whole now, cycle as you said see, see you, suppose you have two dogs one dog is very nice very faithful to you whenever your friends come the dog waves his tail and you know very very friendly dog and you have another dog which he, which barks on you yourself only that any friend comes he just bites them and you know he he tears off your sofa and furniture and things now if you make both dogs fight which dog will win the good dog or bad dog bad dog why why because it has a already has a aggressive aggressive no. Uh, attitude no the answer is that dog will win whom you fed more if you fed more the good dog he will become more powerful and he will defeat the bad dog and if you have fed more bad dog then bad dog will win same is applicable to mind and intelligence we are listening to mind again and again that is making mind more and more stronger intelligence weaker but in a normal situation what should happen intelligence should be more stronger than mind so that mind when goes to this wrong direction intelligence can control now how to do that to strengthen intelligence we take support of spiritual practices especially study of the scriptures now if somebody say no no i don't want to take help of study of the scriptures then let's go back to the 16th chapter of bhagavad gita where krishna says then he cannot get out of the asuric tendencies he will be in demonic nature always demonic means exploitative nature always so he has to take help of scriptures and association of devotees to strengthen the intelligence and then further mind can be tamed okay okay yeah varad krishna prabhu Yes, Prabhu. Uh, it uh, you know, I mean, somewhere I read, you know, like when uh, we have this desire to eat an animal, for example. I mean, mm. you know, this is by habit, or you know, that we we just say, okay, we want to eat. But then, what actually we are doing, we are gratifying our senses, yes. But at the same time, that we are delaying the action that we are delaying. the lifetime of that animal if it was a normal lifetime that animal would go to his to its next birth and carry exactly. on its process exactly yes. so therefore we are responsible in that delaying of that uh, poor animal to come to a human form of life and then thereby be responsible for our act which is sinful therefore in if you see the grains i mean just going into technical technical aspect of it when we harvest the grain when the plant dies we don't harvest it when the plant is green the plant dies we harvest the grain in the same way when we take fruits we don't cut the tree we just take the fruits which are ripened and sometimes the plant itself leaves the fruits when they are ripened so the purpose is not to obstruct anyone's evolution the natural evolution is that they are going through the species of life and prabhupada also says that real violence means obstructing anyone's advancement in spiritual life so if they will evolve these animals will evolve they will come to human life they will get chance to again re spiritualize their life so that aspect also is associated with killing animals it's not just about the pain they undergo but more than that the spiritual obstruction that we are creating in their life that is also very sinful so yeah that is the main thing that how we have to be very very cautious that if we are doing any action it starts with our desire we can't blame anything anybody for that now this action 
the performer of action and the knowledge associated with it this is also in three modes and krishna is going to describe that diya mata ji can you read text 19 According to the three modes of material nature, there are three kinds of knowledge, action, and performer of action. Now, hear of them from me. So, in the next few verses, we will be studying that that how these action, knowledge associated with that, and the soul, the worker, all of them, how they are governed by. the three modes of material nature so we have made a simple table which is easy to understand so krishna is describing knowledge in three modes action in three modes worker in three modes and understanding in three modes then determination in three modes happiness associated with that in three modes so let us study them one by one knowledge in mode of goodness is is basically when a person sees living entity to be part and parcel of the supreme lord whether a demigod human being animal bird beast aquatic plant it doesn't matter different bodies are the different uh, results of their karma but actually they are all living entities so when we see others in that light that knowledge is in the mode of goodness now when we look at only bodies of other living entities that is in mode of passion yes this person has a nice body this person has bad body that is in mode of passion so he is not very attached to the soul concept but to the bodily concept and then third is knowledge in the mode of ignorance it's little ironic because knowledge is opposite to ignorance but knowledge in mode of ignorance means actually absence of knowledge so he is so attached to his own self that he doesn't uh, doesn't refer to any scripture or any other understanding which is higher in life and extremely attached to his own material activity like eating bathing drinking enjoying you know sleeping so he has no even ambition in life that knowledge is very like a knowledge of an animal so like animalistic knowledge that is in mode of ignorance yes varad krishna prabhu yeah uh, prabhu i mean the in goodness knowledge god goodness number 2 all those situated false in many forms what does this mean see there are many forms situated like there are many species there can be animals there can be reptiles there can be all these different species and a person realizes that this particular form is not the ultimate form of the soul so this knowledge of soul helps him to understand that this situation is not real the situation is false so soul is situated in this forms but the situation is not the real form of the soul that is the meaning so he sees different like so is it, we studied yeah. that na sorry that that sorry. a learned man so sees it, all equally yeah yeah go ahead so false i mean here the word instead of false if we would have put uh, uh temporary would that yes. would that be yeah, correct yeah. yeah yeah it's it's more correct yeah temporary yeah okay all right okay okay then we comes to we come to okay vishnu priya mata ji raise hand Krishna Prabhu, um, actually, I had a question for the mode of passion. You mentioned seeing different being in each body, and you did mention that one should perceive the other person. Uh, let's take it for devotees. Uh, 
like soul but somehow uh, the way that we live nowadays people see like you should be um, dressed a certain way look a certain way and there's some expectation for, from society and sometimes we see it in mandira as well so how can we can we just step out of this that if someone wants to dress up that his choice or her choice and how can we convince someone that we should not like see them like from the bodily or the way he's he or she is dressed but from the soul perspective that i i fail to to make someone understand uh, this that we just we just see someone um on needful body but uh, the soul so that's a bit conflicting for me to see, understand dressing. and to yes yeah dressing dressing nicely or being presentable is not wrong Yes. devotees should dress very nicely because we are in preaching movement but on the basis of dress there should not be distinction it is for those who are all or already in bodily concept of life. you see when you are in devotee community then it doesn't matter but when you are going out for preaching then see they are already in bodily concept of life and the first impression you give them is that devotees don't dress nicely they will never come near to you so for preaching we go to their level that is different but a devotee's vision is not limited to dress or body a devotee sees everybody as part and parcel of the supreme lord okay yes thank you so devi mata ji yes prabhu ji text 21 the translation i just cannot understand text that knowledge by which one sees 21 okay that in yeah. every different body there is a different type of living entity yeah so, this type of this type of uh, uh, understanding is like oh this is uh, brahmana he is greater this is shudra this is lower this is a an animal you can cut and eat it so their understanding is according to body they are a different living entity like in christianity they they believe that animals don't have soul so you can kill them so like that they have different con concepts that okay different bodies means different living entities but that does that is not true all living entities are spark you know spiritual spark that is soul so they are same so all souls are the same also like same same, same, same in sense same same attributes they are individual souls they are individuality mm -hmm. but they are same attributes they are part and parcel of the supreme lord same in size same in qualities you know so that way yeah. they are they are same okay okay, okay. thank you it doesn't mean that elephant has a fatty soul then a ant has a small soul it doesn't happen like that. Yeah. yeah thank you prabhu then krishna describes action in the three modes so when the action is regulated according to varnashram according to the occupational duties it is in mode of goodness when it is performed without attachment when it is done without being attached or being without being averse to certain situation and also when one performs them without desiring for results that action is in mode of goodness which krishna already described when he was describing the uh, the uh real renunciation so renunciation in mode of goodness is as good as action in mode of goodness then action in mode of passion it is associated with great endeavor and driven by how much sense gratification i can squeeze out of this particular activity and of course it is driven by false ego that i am the owner of this body and i have to enjoy the senses i am the enjoyer that type of understanding is in mode of passion then action in mode of ignorance performed in complete ignorance 
he doesn't ignorance means what illusion means what he is oblivious to the fact that i am accountable to somebody he is oblivious to the fact that i am doing this sinful activity and later i will be punished he doesn't care for supreme lord or the yamdutas or yamraj no he disregards scriptural injunctions he has no concept of thinking about future therefore the activities in mode of ignorance are generally almost on the level of animal yes varad krishna prabhu yeah i think in that column of knowledge i mean from the question which uh, mataji sudevi asked yes. don't you think that maybe hello I'm yes okay? yes i can hear yeah, yeah. uh in the in that column of goodness knowledge you know i mean from the question of mataji sudevi do you think that uh, maybe i'm thinking you know that maybe there should be a third point in that column which says that we have also a in in knowledge we have a constitutional uh, position to be subservient to the lord yes because when you yes. look at the column of ignorance no knowledge yeah. of the truth Yes. So I believe the third point make may make clear this, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. See, there is little difference. See, person in mode of goodness may not come to the level of service of Krishna. Okay. But person in mode of ignorance certainly doesn't realize even truth means truth means realizing body and soul. absolute truth means realizing krishna so person so has to goodness pure goodness it has to go beyond goodness to come to the level of vasudevam sarvamiti yesterday we were discussing that vasudev yeah. sthiti means pure goodness that is very very rare but when we are talking okay. about just goodness goodness means realizing i am not body i am soul and it starts from there then further he inquires okay i am soul what is the activity of soul jeevar swarup hai krishna er nitadas i have to be servant of krishna that is the next step but when okay. we talking about these three steps then it's limited to this understanding okay so it's all right thank you i'm sorry then the worker in the three modes worker means the soul in the condition state so when one is in the mode of goodness he is very much free in the material world not completely free but he is very much free when the this is written without ego it means purified ego nobody can be without ego ego means identity but when it says without ego means purified ego then like you know when we are sick somebody may say oh he doesn't have temperature now that doesn't mean that he doesn't have any temperature he has normal temperature so in the same way is well no false ego and his activities will be with great enthusiasm determination and unwavering success or failure he is unwavering he is not affected by success or failure in this material world which is in sanskrit called nirvikara is devoid of happiness and distress when he attains or does not attain specific results like shila prabhupada also told tells in purport he doesn't care for success or failure he is equal in happiness and distress because he is not attached now coming to person in mode of passion he is very very attached to the results if he doesn't get result he will not do that activity to begin with because any activity which he is doing is with desire to enjoy the results so he is very greedy when others progress more than him he is very envious and he is very impure in terms of his desires so he is very attached to the fruits person in mode of ignorance is harmful for himself harmful for others he doesn't accept shastra he is very adamant he adopts cheating ways to harm others insult others 
lazy, procrastinating, morose, all these are attributes of worker in the mode of ignorance. Yes. Vishnu Priya Mataji. Uh, Aisha Prabhu, actually, I have the question for the first one of goodness. Um, uh, you mentioned that we should not be affected by any success or failure and should not feel any kind of like the feeling that we have. But somehow, time uh, when we do services and we kind of have some, um, I don't know, the anxiety, some like we're not doing it well, not well, which can happen. You don't enjoy the service in the, in the process thing that if you're doing it well or not. Is it is it normal to do it when doing services? Like you are distressed or you're like something have not happened the way you want it to happen. So is it a normal feeling for a devotee or it's a bad one? Like we are just shifting from the mood of goodness and we're going to another uh, place. See, in Krishna consciousness... That's... Yes. We focus more on the endeavor part than results. Yes. Because if you if you talk about results, then Prabhupada was a failure for 40 years in his life. <laughs> but if you talk about endeavor, he becomes an Acharya. He was constant, constantly endeavoring to serve his spiritual master. So devotee should be more conscious of endeavor part. He is not affected by the results. And therefore, Prabhupada's example is such a beautiful example. For 40 years in his life, he was just constantly endeavoring without you know, being attached to his results. Because his spiritual master wanted him to preach, he was preaching. And ultimately, finally, Krishna gave him the ultimate success. So even if, just let's consider, even Prabhupada would have came to America and nothing would have happened, still he would be an Acharya. It's not that Prabhupada had established ISKCON, then for only his Acharya. No. Even if ISKCON would have not been there, still he would be Acharya because full life he tried to serve as a spiritual master. So that endeavor part is more important in Krishna consciousness. Okay? Saurabh Thank Prabhu. you so much, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. It's okay? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Now we come to the understanding part that how we summarize this full understanding of the action. So actions, understanding in three modes. Person in mode of goodness, what is the level of his understanding? Person in mode of passion, what is his level of understanding? So person in mode of goodness, his understanding is very clear. He knows what to be done, what not to be done because he follows scriptures. He has a healthy fear what activities may be detrimental for his spiritual growth. He is fearful of things which may bind him to material clutches. So that is a sensible person you know, who follows scriptures and he knows what to do, know what not to be done. Person in mode of passion can't really tell what to do, what not to do, because he's more governed, he's more driven by his desires. So if his desires will make him run for some activity which is irreligious, he will still do it. He's not sure, basically. So sometimes he may be religious, sometimes he may be irreligious, depending on his desires. Now, talking about person in mode of ignorance, he is, for him, religious is irreligion. Irreligion is religion. He is in such darkness. He thinks that, you know, almost as we discussed before, almost like an animal. Somehow or other, if he can lead his life on the expense of others, that is his success. So he is always into wrong direction, oblivious of the scriptures. Like it is told about Jagai and Madhai in Chaitanya Chaita Amrit, that they would search in the scriptures what should not be done and they would do that. That is person in mode of ignorance. They would exactly do opposite. Let's see about their determination, how their determination is. Person in mode of goodness, their determination is unbreakable, their steady determination. 
because they have full control over their mind and senses. Now, person in mode of passion, they are determined, but more for their own results. If they don't get that results, their determination changes. Person in mode of ignorance is devoid of determination. It can't go beyond daydreaming, fearfulness, moroseness, etc. And talking about the results, happiness, very important point. Person who is practicing action and mode of goodness, for him, things may be poison in the beginning, but nectar at the end. What does that mean? That there may be difficulties in course of his practice, but when he becomes successful in his control of mind and senses, he, he feels immense happiness. And his result is self-realization. Whereas person in mode of passion is just opposite. He is a nectar in the beginning, poison at the end. So initially when he entangles in the sense gratification, he feels very happy. But then the result is suffering. And for person in mode of ignorance, poison in the beginning, poison in the end. He is so blind to self-realization that his life is governed by dissolution from beginning to end. So that is the level of happiness they undergo. Now, let us understand the, the summary of this whole discussion starting from verse 40. So I will request we will read okay Shruti Dar Prabhu, can you read text 40? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. There is no being existing either here or among the demigods in the higher planetary systems, which is freed from these three modes born of material nature. So Krishna is saying, don't think that you are not into that category. Every person has to think that which mode is governing his life and should slowly, slowly improve from that situation. Braja Sevaki Mataji, please read next one. Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras are distinguished by the qualities born of their own natures in accordance with the material moods or chastiser of the enemy. So, this whole Varanashram system is also based on these. Three modes of material nature. We have discussed this before. Brahmanas, they are in mode of goodness. Kshatriyas, they are in mode of passion. Vaishyas, they are in mixture of mode of passion and ignorance. And Shudras, in mode of ignorance. Now Krishna is giving the qualities of Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishya and Shudra. Shrashti Mataji, can you read text 42? Peacefulness, self-control, austerity, purity, tolerance, honesty, knowledge, wisdom, and religiousness. These are the natural qualities by which the Brahmanas work. So Brahmanas, these are the uh, nine qualities which Krishna gives here. Shamo, Damo, Tapo, Saucham, Shanti, Marja, Vamevacha, Jnana, Vigyana, Mastikyam. Brahma, Karma, Subhavajam. Sama means peacefulness. Dhamma, self-control. Tapa, austerity. Saucham, purity. Shanti, tolerance. Arjavam, honesty. Jnanam, knowledge. Vijnanam, practical knowledge. Astikyam, religiosity. So, a Brahmana has to have these qualities. That makes him Brahmana. Here, nowhere Krishna has written that one who is son of Brahmana should be Brahmana. No. These are the qualities which make one Brahmana. So somebody who argue, you can show them this verse. Okay. Now Krishna is giving qualities of Kshatriya. Bhutva Prabhu, can you read text 43? Okay. 
one minute. Huh? Spotify. Heroism, yeah. power, determination, resourcefulness, courage in battle, generosity, and leadership are the natural qualities of a of work for not all the natural qualities of work for the Kshatriyas. So Kshatriyas, they have to have these qualities. And you can see many of them are seen in the Kshatriyas in the past, like Parikshit Maharaj, Yudhishthya Maharaj, the heroic, powerful, determined, you know, all these qualities are very much necessary. Then in one verse, Krishna talks about Vaishyas and Shudras. So, Amar Mitai Prabhu, please read. Hare Krishna. Farming, cow protection, and business are the natural work for the Vesha and for the Shudras. There are labor and service to others. So, for Kshatriyas, this is the, sorry, for Vaishyas, Krishi, Goraksha, Vanijyam. Three things. Farming, cow protection and business. This is for Vaishyas. And for Shudra, mainly helping the upper societies. Service is Shudras. So this is determining the different qualities. And nobody should think that what is higher, what is lower. No. Krishna is clarifying in the 45th verse. Jagatambika Mataji, please read. By following, his quality, <clears throat> by following his qualities of work, every man can become perfect. Now please hear from me how this can be done. So it's not that somebody who is a Shudra cannot become perfect in life. No. Everybody can become perfect in life. In any ashram, anything, what 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 is the what is the process? Any guess what Krishna is going to tell now? How anybody, any ashram, any mode of modes, he can become perfect. Any guess what Krishna will tell? Prabhuji, by performing devotional service to the Supreme Lord. Devotional service. What else will be there? You know. So that is the next verse. Krishna is saying that. So, Venudari Prabhu, read. By worship of the Lord, who is the source of all beings and who is all pervading, a man can attain perfection through performing his own work. So, just by worshipping the Supreme Lord, becoming his devotee, even while doing one's own work, whatever mode one is, don't worry, keep on doing our work, one can become perfect. Jiver Sarupoy Krishna Nityadas. That's what we have to focus. And Krishna is saying, therefore, don't try to compare your work with others. That will not work. Krishna is saying in the verse 47. Okay, who didn't read? Let me see. Anupama Mataji, would you like to read? 47. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. It is better to engage in one's own occupation, even though one may perform it imperfectly, than to accept another's occupation and perform it perfectly. Duties prescribed according to one's nature are never affected by sinful reactions. So therefore Krishna is saying, stop comparing with others' activities. Even if your activity you are doing with some mistakes, don't worry. It's far better than doing others' activity, you know, perfectly. So as per your sabhav, as per your modes, keep on doing your duties, but keeping Krishna in center. Okay, verse 48, Diya Mataji, can you read? It's on the screen. Yeah. Every endeavor is covered by some fault, just as fire is covered by smoke. Therefore, one should not give up the work born of his nature, O son of Kunti, even if such work is full of fault. So, just like fire is always associated with smoke. So, don't worry. Every activity will have some fault. But don't give it up. As if Krishna is encouraging Arjun that, okay, your activity, you may think 
that there are some faults, you know, killing your own guru and things. But don't worry about it because every activity has some or other fault, but you have to see your situation and work accordingly. So here we take a little break of two, three minutes. I will not leave you for another half an hour. So be prepared. <laughs> so just two, three minutes of break. We'll come back and we will continue. Yeah, Bharat Krishna Prabhu, you want to say something? Please unmute. Hare Krishna. Bharat Krishna Prabhu, we can't hear you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. I'm talking yeah. of verse 48, the purple. Yes, yes. <clears throat> that... Uh talking uh, these things are necessary, one cannot avoid them. Similarly, even a man is a sudra serving a bad master. He has to carry out the order of the master, even though it should not be done. You know, this, this, this line, you know, I mean, like, uh, you know that what you, you, you're under the control of somebody and that what the person is asking you is bad, but here it is probably saying that we should do it under the yeah. bad master. See, I, we have to understand. Problem. We have to understand. Prabhupada is telling about shudras, not brahmanas. See, brahmana can discriminate, kshatriya can do that, vaishyas can do, but shudra, by his nature, he is dependent on his master. So even though if master is not properly in the right path this sin will go to the master not the servant because he is doing his dharma being a shudra if he would be brahmana kshatri or vaishya then he has that you know discrimination like what to speak about that i mean let's talk about sanjay sanjay was following dhritarashtra dhritarashtra was doing all kind of nasty things but does that make sanjay less advanced no Sanjay was doing his dharma. Let's talk about Akruda. Akruda was in the court of Kansa. Kansa was doing all kind of uh, irreligious activities. But that was not affecting Akruda because he was only doing his dharma. To the extent that Akruda was sent to bring Krishna and Balaram so that Kansa can kill them. <laughs> so Akruda even executed that. But his consciousness was very pure that no, my lord, you are all powerful. I am just doing my duty. I know you will handle the situation. So that is talk about Shudra. Akruda was not a Shudra. That is a very graphic example. But when we talk about Shudra, they are dependent on their master. They are supposed to serve their master. So even if the master says something wrong, he is responsible for that decision, not the Shudra. Like that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Saurabh Prabhu. How can a person know what is his uh, occupation? He's like, for, for example, uh, as for some people may be doing for some part of their life, they may be in IT, then they may move to different business verticals. Yeah. Or they, so, they can move to Vash, they can start doing their own business. So, first of all, what is that? This is, uh, this is not this is not concept of Varnashram. Varanashram doesn't mean just occupation, but the qualities which Krishna is describing. It's not that somebody goes for a teaching job, he becomes a Brahmana. No. Brahmana has to have the qualities which Krishna just gave in before a couple of verses. So, generally in Vedic Varanashram, Guru would help disciple to understand his Varna. Guru would recognize that in Gurukul and he would guide disciple according to his tendencies into a particular varna. So that was the responsibility of a guru. Now if we don't have that kind of guidance in life, it's very difficult to understand our varna because Janmana Jayati Shudra. We all are Shudra by default, by birth. So guru drafts a person according to his inclination into a Brahmana, Kshatri or Vaishya. Otherwise, by default, we all are Shudras. So if somebody is unsure about his varna, he should by default take it as Shudra. But if then is fortunate that he gets Guru in life and then he drafts that person into Brahmana, Shati or Vaishya, that is another thing. Okay? 
नम्र सीता माता जी प्रभु Can we also relate the same thing in our practical uh, world now? Uh, like we have counselors, and so for a child, when we go to the counselor and whatever counseling the uh, counselor gives, accordingly we should decide the career of the child. Is it? Uh, can we relate something? Not like exactly. This? It may be a perverted version of Guru Kul system, but see, this Varnashram was always a spiritual system. so these qualities are not just mm-hmm. external counseling of career choice you know these qualities which mm-hmm. are described by krishna above they are more important if you notice all qualities of brahmanas are on subtle level then when you come to kshatriya there are mixture of some subtle qualities plus some gross qualities i mean physical qualities like being heroic is a subtle quality but being courageous and strengthful is a physical quality then when you come to vaishyas it goes to more physical than subtle you know doing farming doing cow protection doing business and then when you come to shudra it becomes more you know narrow it just serve the upper caste so that is the understanding that the association with varna is not just occupation it is more associated with the spiritual qualities so current counseling system may be perverted you know uh, reflection of it but that is not the real essence of our national as per gurukul system okay hmm. okay so dear devotees now we have two choices what are the two choices we stay here together now for another half an hour or else tomorrow we come together at 10 o'clock i mean sorry uh, 8 o'clock indian time 6:30 mauritian time for half an hour i just need half an hour so either we come tomorrow or we continue today half an hour choice is yours tomorrow Prabhu. tomorrow tomorrow okay so i will post timing just for half an hour if you can come tomorrow please because we are going too late with our schedule and you know the exam dates and things everything has to be shifted otherwise so please if you can come half an hour tomorrow then we can be on the track again so we end here please come back tomorrow and i will post the time just i need half an hour to 40 minutes and we will will be good okay Hare Krishna. The timing, the timing for tomorrow. Timing, I will post. I'll post on the group. Yeah. Mostly okay. it will be same time. It will be same time. Yeah. Just that I need half. Good. Yeah, half an hour to forty minutes. Just that much slot I need. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Samavetha Kadamba ki jai.